stand with us this evening? It's good to see all the saints out this evening, and I know that we've got several outs, Mother's Day, and we understand that, but we're glad that you're here uh, with us tonight. Will you bow your head and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you, and we thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here this evening. We just ask that you would move across this sanctuary, God, upon every heart and every life, and that you would have your way. God, we may, Lord, it may be a Sunday night, but you're still able to save. You're still able to heal. You're still able to deliver tonight, God. And we just ask that you would help us to be sensitive to the Spirit so that you may do what you've come to do. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, it's like fire, and it shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. It feels like fire, and it shut up in my bones. Well, that Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. It feels like fire, and it shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. Fire, and it shut up in my bones. Well, that Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. Jerusalem was shaking and Pentecost had arrived. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, Peter stood among them and he knew there was no doubt. Well, that Holy Ghost fire, it makes you want to shout. It feels like fire. And it shut up in my bones with that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it feels like fire. And it shut up in my bones with that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Well, now Jerusalem was shaking and Pentecost had arrived. Well, they were in an upper room getting drunk on the new wine. Well, Peter stood among them. And he knew there was no doubt. Well, that Holy Ghost fire, it makes you want to shout. It feels like fire, and it shut up in my bones. Well, that Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. It feels like fire, and it shut up in my bones. Well, that Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. So may get offended. When I dance and shout, they say it's just emotion and too much moving about. Don't tell me to be quiet, I won't sit down in my pew. Cause if you felt what I felt, would you be shouting? It feels like fire, and it shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. It feels like fire, and it shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Filled with holy boldness and born to prophesy. The prophet Jeremiah, he would lift his voice and cry. Be quiet, post commanded. Shut up and leave us alone. How can you be quiet when there's fire burning in your bones? It feels like fire. And it shut up in my bones. So that holy ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, oh that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it feels like fire. It shut up in my bones, that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it feels like fire. It shut up in my bones, oh that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. thankful for that fire tonight. Have you ever thought about something and then it just slips your mind? It happens to me every time. Living praises to our God. Every word of worship, word of Lord, every praise. Every day, 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 every day,
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, man. We got to do that. Every praise. Amen. Every praise is through our God. Every praise is through our God. Every word of worship is born of gold. Every praise, every praise is through our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is through our God. Every praise, every praise is through our God. Every praise.
God, you are my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him this evening. Hallelujah. It's my Savior, my healer. He's my deliverer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I feel that in my spirit tonight. Amen. Ushers, would you come? We're going to take up tonight's evening offering that goes directly to pay the bills, that goes to, to take care of the business here at the church. And so just give us given to the Lord. And thank you again so much for all that you do. Father, we love you. We thank you for your presence, God, that we feel already in this place tonight, Lord. And we just ask that you, God, Lord, as we worship you in our giving, that, Lord, that you would bless the gift and bless the giver as you've already promised. In Jesus' name, amen.
Don't you want to go with me to God's new city? And don't you want to hear that heavenly choir sing? Don't you want to touch the nail scarred hands that brought this great salvation plan? Can't you feel stir it in your soul? Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go with me to God's new city? And don't you want to hear that heavenly choir sing? Don't you want to touch the nail scarred hands that brought this great salvation plan? Can't you feel stirring in your soul? Don't you want to go? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, there's a good anointing here tonight. Amen. You can be seated this evening. We make a few of announcements while I'm making them. Brother Matt, would you join us? I'll save you an up and down. I caught you just in time. May the 14th will be the benefit. That's com this coming Saturday for the Brother Bryant's family at the Black Rock School Cafeteria up there. We'll start at 11 o'clock. Ladies, if you want to make a baked good uh, to add to this, then you can get with my mom and let her know what you're able to do. Also, on May the 14th, Brother Jeff will be preaching a rally at the Way of the Cross Church in Kensett, Arkansas. There, Kensett, Searcy, it's a suburb of Searcy, it's right there. The bus is going to leave at 4 o'clock, service will start at 6.30. So, teenagers, if you want to go, or adults, you want to go, let us know, and uh, we'd love to take a van load or a bus load down there to be in this service. On May the 23rd will be our next Christ for Veterans Meeting at 6.30. At 6 uh, Seth Bradley will be doing the devotion for that. We're looking forward uh, to that. It's going to be a good devotion. Team A is doing the meal, so if you've got any questions about that, get with Brother Troy or Sister Stacy uh, in regards to what they're going to be fixing. On June the 4th, we have the Joy 55 Club is going to Hardy uh, to a car show up there. Any more details, get with Sister Anita. On June the 6th through the 9th will be our youth camp cost again we don't have it down exactly because we haven't bought the food yet but it will be somewhere between 40 and 50 dollars uh for everybody that is going if you're able to go if your children are going or if you're able to go and volunteer please let sister jessica know uh, so that we can get a count there also we don't this we that's for ages eight and up as far as campers but we also need volunteers and so if you're able to go and be with us you'll have a great time also also, if you are interested or would like to be water baptized, maybe it's something, maybe you've never been water baptized or something that you would want to renew, uh, let Sister Jennifer know we're going to be scheduling a date to have a water baptism service, and we'll get that, uh, we'll get that down. So keep that in mind. This week, Wednesday night, we'll be picking up Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 1. So if you want to familiarize yourself with that, uh, then you can do that, but this week, uh, we'll be picking up right there. And then again, next Sunday night, right after service, we're going to have a short meeting. It's uh, uh, for members and for those that attend here regularly. Uh, it's not a voting deal or anything, but we, we do want you to hang around if you can at all. Just some exciting things that we want to share and uh, some exciting news that we have. How many likes exciting news? Yeah. Amen. It's good news, is bad news, and there's exciting news. And so we like exciting news, and so uh, we want you to hang around for that. I asked Brother Matt. Uh, if he would to share, uh, he was in the hospital for three and a half, four weeks, I don't know, a long time, and uh, it's going to be right in order because when he gets done, we're going to go move right in to praying for those that need a touch in their body, but I'm just glad to have Brother Matt back, yeah. amen. Yeah. Well, Matt, come on, testify for us. Y'all are not nearly as happy to, for me to be back as I am to be back. By the hospital, ain't no fun. I just want to start out and say how God, how faithful our God is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we take it for granted some, sometimes how, how great our God is Amen. and just how able he is to, to help us with whatever need that it is that we have. And I was guilty. You know, we come to church and we praise the Lord and, and thank God for that. 
you know, I love to praise the Lord as much as anybody else. But, you know, there's times that, that we have needs in our lives. I mean real needs. I'm not talking about, you know, my grass won't grow in the front yard, even though, you know, that might be a need for you. But, but there's times that we've really got to get a hold of God. Amen. And, uh, and I cannot thank you all. There is not words to express how thankful I am for this church body. Because the whole time that I was in the hospital, I was getting texts and calls. And all of y'all were reaching out and telling me that you were standing with me in the fight in prayer. And that is, y'all, you don't know what that means. To be a part of a family that you know is right there with you in the fight. And I know it may seem, you know, something small, you know, to most people to say, I'm praying for you. But when you know that you know that they're really praying for you, Amen. they're really believing for you, Amen. they're really standing by your side, it means something. Yes, but I want to tell you what the Lord has done. And it started off before I ever went in the hospital. I didn't know it, but... But I had uh, I w had a surgery done about a month. I, it was over a month ago. I guess it was two months ago. I've lost, lost track of time. But I uh, had a surgery on my stomach. And uh, I started feeling weak and tired. And I didn't know what was going on. And mom had just happened to, to come down for, uh, for Jordan. Uh, he got inducted into the junior beta as the president over there, and so mom wanted to be a part of it. And she had just, spur of the moment, just come down on a Friday. And, uh, or maybe a Saturday, I don't remember now, but that's not important. Yeah, but anyway, I was eating dinner with my mom and my son and my daughter, and uh, we got to the end of the meal, and I don't know, they got to talking and they decided I didn't need to go to the emergency room. I wasn't wanting to go. <laughs> I don't like hospitals. But I went down there to Jonesboro and uh, went in there and they did all their testing and everything. And I don't know, it, it got about time that I thought I was ready to go home, so I ripped out the IV that they had put in there. And two minutes later, she come in and said, uh, what did you rip out that IV for? You've got to be admitted. And I'm thinking, no. No, I'm going home. You don't understand. But they, they told me a little later on that I had two cysts in my abdomen. And that I should have gone septic and probably died. But my body, and it's not my body, it's the Lord walled around that infection and that hole in my stomach where it was leaking out inside of me. Folks, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that don't happen. That don't happen. That was the Lord. You can't tell me that my God is not a God of miracles. And uh, we rocked on from there and, and, uh, they figured out after several tests and CT scans and x-rays and everything else that I had a hole in my stomach and that was what was causing the infection. And they wouldn't operate in Jonesboro for whatever reason. So they had to ship me down to Little Rock and that was an ordeal in itself. They wouldn't let mom drive me down there. They had to take me in an ambulance down there. But I sat in that hospital down there and we went in there and uh, I don't know, wasn't there very long and, and they did another surgery. The doctor went in there and it was a failed surgery. He said he couldn't couldn't get to where the leak was. So he closed me up and sent me back to my room and a few days later told me that, you know, he was going to send me home for two months and uh, come back again and do a surgery. Well, that, that ain't 
I don't know if very many of y'all know me very well, but I'm not going to sit around for two months. Anyway, uh, this whole time, Brother Steve had a prayer text going. And every night, I was seeing where, where y'all was praying. And I was praying. My mom was praying. There were several nights in that hospital room where <laughs> them nurses were probably wondering what was going on in there because there was a Holy Ghost meeting right there in the hospital room where we was praising the Lord and asking him for his help. And that's what you do when you're in a hard spot. You go to the Lord and you trust him because we know as Christians that he is able to help us with whatever it is that we have need of. But long story short, we, we rocked on and, and kept going. And, and the doctor, I don't know, I, he had already told me, you know, a date that I was going home. And in my heart, I was, you know, wanting to go home, but I wasn't wanting to go home under the circumstances. And I was believing God. I said, Lord, I, I can't do this. I can't just go home and sit. I got to have some help, Lord. Lord, I've got to have you. And I, I didn't know what even to pray for. Other than I needed God's help with this, whatever it was. And, and the doctor come in. I don't know, I guess it was the day before I was supposed to go home. It was on a, I think I was supposed to go home on a Monday or two. I don't remember what it was, but... Uh, but the doctor come in and said, I'm not sending you home. <laughs> and I'm thinking, at first I'm thinking, oh my Lord, I can't stay in here no longer. <laughs> but the Lord was working something out that I didn't have a clue. Right. He knew what I needed. And uh, he told me, he's going to keep me in here. And he's not liking the way that that things were going with the drain tubes and and everything else, and and he's going to go ahead and go back in there for surgery. And I'm thinking, you know, you, you're not looking for surgery, but under the circumstances, I was thinking, thank you, Jesus. You know, let's go ahead and get this thing knocked out and over with. So he set up the surgery for later that week. And uh, I don't know, uh, that week, I don't know, I was... I was believing God, and I know y'all was too. And uh, I don't know. There was there was a couple of those Holy Ghost meetings that week, but uh, anyway, he went in there for the surgery, and I come out, and Mom's crying, and she said, she said, "There's not any hope." And I'm telling you, it was only because of my weakness that I didn't get up right then and shout and run around that hospital because my God is faithful. He's faithful. Hallelujah. The doctor come in the next morning and he said, he said, I, I looked all around in there. I found out later he spent three and a half hours looking inside of me for a hole. He said, I wanted to find a hole. He said, I knew it was there. I saw it was there. I can't find it, but it's not there no more. I said, doctor, you ain't got to worry. You ain't got to worry where that hole is because my God is faithful. You just witnessed a miracle. And he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know if I can believe that. He said, I don't know what happened to you. I don't, I, you say it was a miracle, but, but I just know that there's not a hole. I said, doctor, you may not believe in the power of God, but there was a miracle done right before your eyes. And he told me, he said, uh, he said, I'll believe it when the swallow test comes back. So he sent me that Monday to have a swallow test because he didn't believe that I was healed. And I went for that swallow test, and I'd already had one or two of these before. And, and the, the radiologist that, 
did the, what, the swallow test. He said, he said, we're going to do this again. He said, I know right where the leak is. He said, uh, but I went back just in case so I could see just the spot where I saw the leak. And he showed me on, on the screen, you know, where the leak was. And, and the x-rays where it showed that whenever I drank this awful stuff that definitely came from Satan himself. <laughs> uh, he told me where that stuff was leaking out. And... Uh, Anyway, he, he did the test, and, and I can see on the screen as he's doing it. And uh, he's shaking his head the whole time. He said, he said, the leak isn't there no more. Hallelujah. And this whole time, I, I left out an a, a important part of this, but uh, the whole time that this was going on, you know, I was... Like I said, it was all I could do to, it was only my weakness that kept me from running around that hospital. But, but in the meantime, I was telling, telling everybody, I'm talking about the house cleaners, the nurses, the people walking down the halls. I was telling everybody about what God had done. Some of them believed, some of them didn't, some of them rejoiced with me, and some of them rolled their eyes and walked away. But I don't really care. But, uh, but in the process... You know, Satan don't like you gives God glory. Well, the day after, after this happened, after this surgery happened, and I, I'd done told half the hospital by this time. But, uh, but that next day, I've never experienced nausea like I experienced. I was, granted, I was taking nausea medicine, but for the whole next day, after I was giving God glory for what he'd done, I just couldn't hardly even stand to have my eyes open. The nausea was so bad. I wasn't throwing up or anything like that. It just, it was like my world was spinning every time I opened my eyes. And I let it, I let it beat me there the first day. But I, I got to thinking about it that night and about all the people that I'd missed telling about what God had done. And I said, no more, devil. No more. We're going to tell all about it tomorrow. I don't care if I have to do it with my eyes shut. We're going to tell about what God has done. And, you know, we got to do that as Christians sometimes. You know, even when we don't feel like it, we just got to do it. Amen. I mean, even if it's not, don't look, you know, the way it's supposed to. Sometimes we just got to press in. And give God the glory that is due. But uh, going on, after this swallow test happened, the doctor come in the next morning, and he's shaking his head. He said, uh, I guess you know the results of your swallow test, don't you? Yeah, doc. I told you. <laughs> you didn't believe me, but I told you. He said, well, he said... Uh, he said, you know, we read it about in the Bible. I guess the man, you know, went to church and maybe was a Christian. But he said, you know, we read in the Bible about all this, these miracles that happened. About what Jesus did and about his, what his disciples did. All these healings and miracles that, that happened. And, and we question, God, why aren't you doing it today? And he said... These are the words that come out of his mouth. He said, and I'm standing here as a doctor trying to explain away a miracle that God has done. <laughs> and he had to eat his words about not having a miracle. But even him, you know, saying those words, the next day he come in and the enemy of his, our soul come knocking on his heart's door. Because the next day he came in and he said, you know, I've been thinking a lot about your case. He said, I, I can't get it off my mind. He said, I've talked to colleagues and, and different things. And, and uh, he said, they've affirmed to me that everything that I've done is, is the right thing. And, and because you're so young is the reason you're healing, healed. I said, Doc, Doc, you, you're missing it. I said, 
You just told me yesterday that there was no way that that hole healed itself and that it was definitely a miracle. And here you are this morning trying to explain away what God has done. But, you know, that, that's the case with all of us if we're not careful. We'll explain away the miracles that we see on a daily basis. You know, I don't care how big or small it is. You know, if we'll look and we'll pay attention, we can see God's hands moving. You know, it, it may not be, you know, a miracle like what he did in me every single day. But I believe every day if we'll pay attention, we can see the miracle working hand of God in our lives. And we need to start paying attention, church. And we need to start giving God glory for what he's done because my God is faithful. And he is worthy of praise. And I don't know, Sister Carla, you've been on my heart a lot lately. And I'm believing that God's going to give you a miracle too to heal your back. And there's others of you that may not have a, a physical ailment. But I know of some of the situations and I'm not going to call them out. But I believe that God's about to start working. That's right. He's already started. He's already started and he's not done. If we'll just trust him. We've got to trust him, church. We, can, we have to stop depending on ourselves and on the things that we have around us. Those things are wonderful. Doctors are wonderful. Hospitals, I can't say they're wonderful, but I guess they have their place. But, you know, we have these things and they're a blessing. But we have to remember where our hope lies. Our hope lies in Jesus Christ. It doesn't lie in doctors. It doesn't lie in therapists. It doesn't lie in I don't, whatever you want to place your faith in. Our faith belongs in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Because it is only Him that it can get us through. It is only Him that can provide the help that we have need of. And I just want to say glory to God and thank you for what He's done for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, that's another reason we believe. Amen. We're going to move right into a prayer line. If you've got a need this, this evening, we want you to come. We want you to join. We want to join our faith with yours and ask the Lord to touch you. No need is too big. And no need is too small. But we want you to come if you would. And we're going to agree with you and ask the Lord to touch you tonight. Healing is here. Healing is here. Come on, just begin to worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Healing Come on, let's worship him tonight. Saints, would you join with us? Oh, a healing is here. Hallelujah. Oh, healing is here. Hallelujah. Oh, healing is here. Oh, and I. Come on, worship with us tonight. Come on, God. Oh, yes, I do. Hallelujah. Well, I reach my, reach my hand, hand to the heavens. I lift my eyes where my help comes from. I look to you. You're my rock, my healer. Oh, I trust in
Praise the Lord. Thank you, singers and musicians, for your help tonight. Well, it's been a good day in the Lord already. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, for the West, Wednesday night I was supposed to do the youth service, and my voice went on vacation. I'm not sure where it went, but I had to kick the service over to him. So we did Wednesday night, doing tonight, and I short noticed him. And regardless of what everybody thinks, I don't like to short notice people. But I short noticed him, and he stepped up and done good, and I appreciate this guy because he's always ready and willing. Amen? You appreciate this family? Let him know you appreciate him tonight. Uh, thank you. I don't know. I just don't know what it'd be like to not have our faith worship center family. And all I can say is, to God be the glory that has placed each and every one of us in the body as he has seen fit. You're not here for no reason. He's placed you right here, right now for a reason. You may not understand. and We may not. It might take us a little while, but he's going to show us. But you are here, and it's not by mistake. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I won't keep you in standing long. If you will, go to 1 Corinthians and I won't, I, I'll try not to keep you long tonight. It's just something I've got to say. And I just ask the Lord to help me through it and to really expound on what he has put in my spirit. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll start reading at verse 9. I'm breaking this up kind of in a different location, but I pray that you will see by the time we are done what the Apostle Paul is trying to do and also what I believe he is trying to tell us. So the Apostle Paul would write to the church at Corinth and say, for we are laborers together with God. We, he didn't leave anybody out. We are laborers with God. So, you are God's husbandry. You are God's building. I want you to keep note. You are God's building. So, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation... Can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. If you will, let's pray. Lord Father God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, God. This opportunity that you have given us one more time, God. God, we thank you, God, for the presence that we have already felt here this evening, God. I thank you, God, for what you have done and the faith that you have already built tonight, God. God, but I ask that you will anoint me to preach this message, God. That, you will, that I will be a good steward to your word and that you will open the ears and the hearts of your people that they may hear and receive. And I pray for the grace to help us apply these truths to our lives, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We are cut right here at the beginning of 1 Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians, Pastor Brian was in it last week, and Pastor Steve in 2 Corinthians, and we find ourselves in 1 Corinthians again tonight, but 
a little background was is that the city of Corinth, it was a trading city. It was a city that had a lot of people coming in and out, and it was very immoral. And if a person was being just downright a dirty scoundrel or rotten, they would actually nickname him a Corinth. It didn't matter if he was there or not, but if he acted like he was from there, they would say that he was a Corinth. That's how rotten this city was. And the church of Corinth, it was established somewhere around 51 to 53 A.D., give or take. It was established by the Apostle Paul, and he spent some 18 months there. I want you to think about that. He spent 18 months teaching, preaching, laying the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified to the people at Corinth. He spent this time and... We see after he left, it wasn't long afterwards because this letter is believed to have been written somewhere around 55 to 56 A.D. So not much more than a year after he had left, the Corinth church had begun to just have all kinds of problems. And a big problem in the church was the wisdom of men. And it's something that we have to keep an eye on even today. The wisdom of man tries to infiltrate and take over from the wisdom of God. Brother Matt, the wisdom of man tries to explain away a miracle. But the wisdom of God says, I don't know how and I don't know why, but I know God did. The wisdom of God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine. His wisdom actually has been made manifest through you as a believer. You have the master teacher on the inside. You have the one that is able to reveal the mysteries of God to you through the word of God and through the spirit of God. You see, there is nothing that God has provided that you do not have access to. But the question is, as always, do we believe it? Do we believe that the Holy Spirit has truly been sent and dwells inside us to lead us into all truth and all wisdom? Because the church at Corinth, they had left this foundational teaching and began to put their faith in what preacher they liked better. I am of Apollos. Well, I am of Paul. I am of Cephas. Because that's the one I identify with. That's the one that I got saved under. That's the one that talks the way I like to talk. That's the one, the mother ones, I just don't get much out of. You see how it already started? And Paul begins to confront all this. Paul begins to confront the division. He begins to confront the wisdom of men that has infiltrated the church. He has begun to confront their prideful behavior because they was already so puffed up in their ideology and their position and their them being used in gifts. And gifts were running amok and I'm not trying to make a mockery because the gifts should be in use and the gifts are of God and the church of Corinth was not allowing the gifts to operate in order. You know, there's some denominations that are a lot like that today. They allow these gifts, I mean the gifts are for sure real, but they make a mockery out of them because they are not done in order or as the Spirit of the Lord would like. You see, again... We allow man's wisdom and man's flesh flesh to get in the way. You see, he's combating all these issues that had come upon the church at Corinth. But if we look deep throughout this book, throughout this epistle, there is one core, there is one core reason behind it. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Because at the core and the root of the problems at Corinth was that the church was not no longer united in the message 
of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. They had left the foundation that Paul had laid. And as soon as a person or a church leaves the foundation and begins to build upon it with wood, hay, and stubble, things that are not going to withstand the fiery trials of this earth, it is soon to be divided into fall. So tonight I just want to encourage us, remind us, and caution us that we are a building of unity because God has placed each and every one of us in this body. And yes, the Apostle Paul is addressing all the laborers because if we all are laboring toward the same thing, why is there division? Why are we so worried about who's getting to what? Why are we so worried about who's getting a touch and who's not? Why are we not worried more about God's perfect will and what good we can do as a united body for the kingdom of God? Because church, we're a growing church. And as long as there's people in the church, there's going to be a few problems. But if we stay united upon the same foundation that is preached and taught behind this, me- behind this pulpit and then on our Wednesday nights and in our youth programs, we will not fail. We will not fall. We will not fall upon the wayside. There, we will not be divided. We will stand shoulder to go- shoulder because no matter if feelings are hurt and no matter what happens, we know that we know that we know that what we are doing for the kingdom of God is greater than what we feel or our personal self. Because I'm not seeking glory anyways. Oh, sometimes we, we feel like we are, or we want to, should I say, because of self. But give it some time. The Lord will work that out. Because He's trying to do a work here, I believe, at Faith Worship Center like no one around this area has ever seen. Most churches are not growing. Most churches around right now are stagnant. I'm still hearing pastors and church members complain how their memberships are down since the COVID. And I've got to just say, well, we thank God because we're growing. We thank God because we never quit. We thank God because we have a message that is truly helping people. It's not no longer just soothing people's conscience because they're getting to go to church, but it's actually living, they're living it out and it, their lives are being changed because of it. Amen. This passages that we had just wrote, read, the Apostle Paul in verse 9 begins to say that you are God's husbandry. You are God's crop. He has planted you. He has watered you. He has gave you the increase. You see where the church oftentimes messes up, they begin to look at the pastor, preacher, teacher, the apostle, the evangelist, the prophet, as some big something, but they're truly just stewards of the house of God. A steward is a servant, someone that is working to keep things in order within the house of the person they are working for. A steward is someone that is actually dealing with things that are not their own, but they were placed there by somebody else, and they are just overseeing it. Joseph was a type of a steward for Pharaoh. He was overseeing all the grains and all the crops and preparing for the seven years of drought. He was the steward of his house. He was giving to who he needed to give to and taking from what needed to be taken. He was planning for the future. And as people that are laboring for Christ, we've got to recognize we are stewards because it does not matter how good you sing. It does not matter how good you preach or you teach. It don't matter the oratorical ability. It is not yours anyways. 
Anything that you use for God is God because He gave it to you. He, you are not the way you are by chance. It was because God seen something in you. And if you would just accept the calling, if you would accept what Jesus had planned for you before the foundation of the earth, Amen. He will set you up and He will prepare you for what you need. And He equips you to do the service you have been called to do. But oftentimes we get so involved with self and so involved with the world that we forget what we're really here for. We forget what the big picture is and that is souls being saved, souls that are going to get to go to heaven because you listen to the plan of God. You listen to His voice. You are sensitive to His Spirit. You said what needed to be said at, at the moment it needed to be said. That's why you, we're here. Amen. But we cannot do it alone. Amen. And as this church, and as we individually grow together the second part of that verse says don't you know you are God's building and the foundation of that building has already been laid which is of Jesus Christ so once you said yes to Jesus the foundation was there the foundation for you the course was set for you to begin to walk and follow and to be led of the spirit to do exactly what God has called you to do. But as the way it goes, as we begin to walk, we begin to listen. And you know, we begin to listen to things that are not quite right. They're not edifying. That country music that TV show that preacher that's not really a preacher at all, but more of a, should I say, a um, motivational speaker. We listen to the preachers that are not preaching Christ and Him crucified. And we think it's okay. We think that it's doing no harm. Can you imagine Apostle Paul spending two years here laying out the foundation of Christ? And then within a year, you were so far off course that people within the church was having affairs with their mothers or their stepmothers. We, the Bible don't say stepmothers. A lot of scholars say it is, but it was happening. They had become so divided over the simplest things because they had left the foundation. He says, I write unto you, why write unto you as children, feeding you milk because you are yet carnal. They hadn't matured any since he had left. Can you imagine being told You've been a Christian now for four or five years, and since I last seen you, you have not matured any. I'm still having to feed you milk because you cannot handle the meat of the gospel. You cannot handle the hard things. You, cannot, you have not matured at all. He says, though you have 10,000 ministers, but no fathers, you can have 10,000, and the church has 10,000 ministers, but where are the fathers? Where are the mature ones that have truly allowed the foundation to be built upon with the precious things, the precious materials, the gold and the silver and the rubies, the ones that are going to withstand the temperatures of the fire, the ones that are going to be able to last no matter how hard it gets. Because I can tell you, the more this church grows, the more outreach that we begin to do, the more missions we go out to do, the more people we reach over social media, the more people we reach over podcasts, the more people we reach in prisons and in rehab and the schools, the more the devil's going to hate it. 
The more the devil's going to try to attack and divide, and our unity better be good. I pray often, and I pray that we will be a lot like David and Jonathan, and that our souls will be knitted together one to one and one to one, and that we will have a love one for another, that we will not waver and we will stand together, no matter the situation, no matter what we're going through, no matter how if we have messed up or not messed up. We stand together and we stand up for the kingdom of God that we may do a work in the end days because I tell you, church, that the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. There are not many laborers left now days that can tr- truly preach a foundation that will withstand the fiery trials of the devil and that the latter days I can promise you because it's not going to get any easier church our lives are not going to get any easier persecution is going to begin come more rapidly and harder and harder by the time if you can't see it if you don't see it coming you ain't looking because it's going and it's a coming and it's going to get harder and harder and harder So you better be built upon something. You better be united with a group of people that are maturing and working together with you. A group of people that have the same vision, and that is to grow and to save souls that are going to to be, be able to go to heaven. Because that's what it's about. It's not about position. It's not about how good I do or how not good they do. It's not about that. Are they preaching truth? Are they standing up in the gap and preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Are they truly standing there in the will of God? And if they're not, what is it to you? That was a hard one for me to swallow. What is it to you? They'll stand in front of the just judge. They'll give an account for everything they have said. They'll give an account for everything they did. They'll give an account for every soul that was led astray. They'll give an account for the harm that they done for the kingdom. But when you stand in front of the Lord, you are going to stand there. No one else around. You're going to stand there and give account for everything that you have said. The materials that you laid. The materials that you built with. Hey, it's Mother's Day. And I'm grateful for the godly mothers. What are you building your home with? Fathers. Paul said there's not very many fathers. Are you becoming a father? Oh, I know we've not apprehended that which we have been apprehended for, but are we striving to be turned into the image of Christ? Are we striving to hear the voice of the Lord? Are we striving to grow the kingdom of God? Are we striving to be examples to our children? You know, I, I've heard, I might get in trouble for this, but I'm getting kind of used to it. Our kids are watching. They're not ignorant to the fact that spouses have arguments. They're not ignorant to the fact that we have disagreements. Me and Jennifer, we're two different people. Sometimes polar opposite in certain areas as two any married individuals are. And our kids see us struggle sometimes on certain issues, but you know what else they should be seeing? The unity we have when it comes to the house of God. The unity that we have when it comes to the things of God. The unity we have when it comes to... Christ and Him crucified. Because we will not waver on what message that we are preaching or we're teaching or we're leading by example with. We will not waver because this is the only message that will hold and stand the test of time. It's the only thing that you can build upon Jesus Christ and it will stand. It might not seem like it sometimes. It might not sometimes seem like you're going anywhere. The devil's only fighting you because he knows you're, you are going somewhere. You know, I can't never remember remember a true trial when I wasn't saved. I wasn't helping nobody. I wasn't sending no one to the kingdom of heaven. So what did he have to worry about? 
The devil attacking you right now? Good, he's attacking me too. That means we're doing something right. Hey, I look across here. I see a bunch of people like-minded. And tonight, I'm not beating any of us up. I'm giving us a warning. Because I believe God's fixing to do something great. I believe God's going to move in families. I believe he's going to move in church. this church. I believe we're going to grow more and more and more past any expectation we could ever have. I believe that through Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished, we are going to see a salvation of souls like we could never imagine. Amen. But it's going to take unity because whenever we see verses 10, 11, and 12, we see that Paul was the master builder and he had laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. He had already laid the foundation. We already were, It was in chapter 2, chapter 1 and 2, because he says, I am determined to preach nothing other than Christ and him crucified. For we preach Christ crucified. For we glory in the cross. Right. Paul would come about saying all this because he had already laid the foundation and the foundation was just that. And, but he's warning them that you have been, came apart, you have begun to err and you are divided and you are all into man's wisdom and philosophy and what feels good. You are no longer building. But if you'll notice, he didn't condemn them. He gave them a truth. He gave them the truth that let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ, saying that if you are saved, you can only have one foundation. But individually, how are we building? What are we building with? Are we building with the truths of the gospel? Or are we building with man's wisdom? Because the gospel and God's wisdom is never going to line up with man's wisdom. Whenever God tells you to do something, if the world tells you that it's a bad idea, pretty much you can bet that God's already told you to do it. Because it's not going to make sense to them. It's not going to make sense. What sense does it make to the world that you're here right now? That you put God before everything else? What sense does it make whenever you say, no, I'm not going to that ball game on a Wednesday night because I've got church? What sense does it make to the world? What sense does it make? Because they're like, so you can go next Wednesday night. Well, you might not be able to. And going to church, while it don't save you, it's an important part of building the faith of the unity and to be able to fellowship and rely on one another because we don't get that in the world. This is the only time we come together one with another and that we are built up, not tore down by the world. And much of the church has just allowed the world to infiltrate. They are beginning to build upon the foundation of Jesus the things that just tickle the ears of people. They're, they're, the people that go to their churches are just as Paul would say. They are still carnal. There is nothing spiritual about the church of today. Do you know there are whole denominations if they would have listened to Brother Matt's story they would have agreed with the doctor. Can you believe that? Can you believe there's whole denominations that say that doctors are the gifts when it comes to the gifts of healing? Do you believe that they actually teach and preach that? They're building upon a foundation of something that is not true because they are swapping the faith from the believer, from Jesus, to the doctor. I have not got nothing against doctors. But when I go to a doctor, I know 
that at the end of the day, it's still the will of God whether I'm going to live or die. I know I'm going to be subject to God's plan for my life. I know that God is able to do whatever he wants with me. And I try my best just to find what God's trying to change in me. Because every time we go through something, there should be a little maturing going going on. The Father should be being built. The Father should be growing. Oh, ministers are a dime a dozen. The ones that will tickle the ears and make you make you shout. But how many are going to stand there under an anointing and preach a truth that don't make anybody shout? Not many. Because they want to go by the natural responses. But I know that there is one that can take anything that is said by someone that is called of God and to drive it home and to deal with someone's heart for something that they are going through or been struggling with. You see, we are building upon a foundation that has been laid. You, in verse 12, I want you to see this, and I'm, I'll be wrapping up in just a minute. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. You want me to explain this verse very simply? It's things that last and things that don't. So you're going to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ with things that last or things that don't. A kingdom divided will fall. Someone that is not of God will eventually fall. It's not going to last. It's not going to stand the test of time. It is not going anywhere. Do you know why there's a revolving door in the church nowadays? Because people come and they get saved and then ministers begin to minister and not lay the foundation with the stuff that stays or that lasts. They begin to build it with things and hyping people up and then when the true trials start, the fire comes. It's burn away. Because I don't care how big of a miracle, I don't care how big of an experience you've had with Jesus, it's not going to hold you. It's going to be what you know. The disciples spent two and a half years with him. Miracles everywhere. And what did they do as soon as they experienced a little persecution without the power of the Holy Spirit? They ran. They didn't want no more. So don't tell me that one miracle or seeing a few miracles is going to hold you. Let's not build three tabernacles and stay, but let's keep pressing on to the things of God. Let's continue on to the Lord's work. Let's continue on to be about the Master's business. Because it's what's built upon that foundation that's going to hold you. What do you know about the truths of God? I know that He can heal. I know that He's able to come and repair any damage that has been done by Satan. I know He is a restorer and not a destructor. I know that He is one that is closer than a brother. I know that He is one that is able to come into a relationship and restore it. I know He is one that is able to meet each and every financial need. No, I'm not talking about a prosperity people. I'm not a prosperity preacher. Man, our God, He does not care if you're rich or you're poor. All He cares about is that He is going to sustain you and He is going to make sure you have exactly what you need to do the work that He's called you to do. You might not have more than enough, but I can promise you without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to have enough. He's going to make sure that He has equipped you and gave you everything that you need. So no, that's the foundational truths of this. If you will step out on faith and it's truly of God, you will not fail. If you have been built upon a foundation of precious stones, you will not fail. It will stand the test of time. It will stand the fiery trials of the devil. It is not going to be burnt down and whenever you finally make it to heaven and you stand in front of the Lord and hear, well done my good and faithful servant, you will receive a reward. 
No, we're not doing it for a reward. But that's what Paul says. You're going to receive a reward. It's either going to be a good one or a bad one. And that is up to you. God has left that one up to you and me. That really puts a whole new perspective on things. Can you imagine? You think you're wanting a pat on the back now for something that you do? <laughs> Standing in front of Jesus? And you're thinking, you really need to pat, pat me on the back because I did really good. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we sound like now. All right, some of us. I do sometimes. Am I the only one that has a pity party every once in a while? No? All right. Hey, that's the flesh in us. But one day I know that our labor is not in vain, individually and as a church. I know that as we continue on and we build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, it's going to last. But we've got to we've got to remember a half divided will fail. Yes. We look around you, look to your left and look to your right. You know what you're going to see? You're seeing brothers and sisters in Christ, but you're also seeing humans. We're all going to say a few things that we should not have said. We apologize, we repent, we go on. We don't let it knock us out. We don't let it get us down. You know the problem we have a lot of times? It's really not what anybody said at all. It's our pride and it's our self that won't let it go. It's the pride and it's our self that wants to be, well, they should not have said that to me. I can promise you, they didn't say anything near as bad as what you really are. Did that come out right? No, maybe not. Hey, I know who I am. I'm not worthy of heaven. Hey, we're not perfect. We have not arrived. I'm not worthy. No, I didn't just call all y'all Corinthians. <laughs> but my point is, we're not worthy. We're not in this for ourselves. We are in this as a church that should be being united and knitted together to do a work for the kingdom. If we will keep our focus on winning souls, if we will keep our focus on seeing people change and people delivered, if we will keep our focus on seeing families put back together and restored, if we will keep our focus on lifting one another up instead of tearing one another down, if we will keep our focus on Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and more worried about him building things in us. Because we are in his building. Than we are about what he's building next door. How much better off will we be? Because as a church that's growing, we're going to have problems. We're going to have issues. What we do with them issues if we line them up with the biblical truths, if we die to a little bit of self, as Pastor Brian would say, if we just keep the main thing the main thing, we're going to make it. Oh, I know I've not really preached and preached hard and everybody's shouting, but it's something I believe needed to be said because as a growing church, the devil's sure to come. And the chances are he's not going to attack the church as a whole. He's going to hit us individually. He's going to try to divide us one from another. 
He's going to try to divide families, parents from children, wife against husband, pastor against pastor, minister against minister, praise and worship leader against praise and worship leader. Because if he can just get a little jealousy in there, if he can just get a little division in there, if he can just get you exactly where he wants and make you want to throw your hands up, one pillar will fall. And while the pillar falls, the house won't crumble right away. It's just weakened. But if he can get two or three or four, it's not long before the house is divided because it has done fell in on itself. So as Brother Jeff, how about just bring all the singers and musicians with you, if you don't mind, and sing whatever you feel led. But I want to leave here. I want to leave here tonight knowing that God is faithful. And if we will continue to build upon this foundation with the truths of the gospel, there is not a situation in your personal life. There is not a situation within the church. There is not a situation in your job, in your finances, in your schools, that God is not able to see you through. But the question is, are you believing in the truths that have been ministered of the Word of God to you? The truths of Christ and Him crucified. Have you allowed that material to build up on the foundation of your heart? Can you discern what is right and what is wrong? Have you been in the Word enough to know what is truth and what is not truth? Are you sensitive enough to the Spirit to know what it is that God's wanting you to do? Are you sensitive enough? This work is way too much for just one or two or three or four. It's going to take all of us. There's not one person that is less in it than anybody else. From the littlest to the biggest, we all have a unique part to play. And I will promise you, I promise you, we will make it. And no, I'm... I'm tarrying just a little bit. But you know, I'm not ignorant to the fact that I've not been able to feel the devil moving and trying to divide. I don't know situations. I can just sense it and tell it sometimes. There's been a lot of attacks. There's been things we've been going through that has hindered our work for the kingdom. It's made us set back. Can I ask you tonight? Are you ready to make it a priority again? Are you ready to reunite with the rest of us again? Are we ready to go win the lost? Are we ready to do what God's called us to do? If you're not quite ready... That's okay. We'll be here when you're not, but don't leave. Don't quit. Please don't quit. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you've been going through. It's not my business because I don't want it my business. When I get people's business in me, I, it's hard to separate what's spiritual from what's natural. But I can tell you, God knows. God knows every question and everything you've been asking. God knows. He knows exactly how you feel right now. I want to open up the altars. I want to open up the altars. Church, and I'm not going to leave anybody out. I know the devil's come in and he's been trying to divide 
either individuals or however. He may have even came into your finances. He was come into your family. I don't know. But you, the, many of us have been struggling. I just want to come together in unity because there's power and united prayer. Let's pray one for another. Is that okay? Will you come? Can we pray one for another tonight? Pray for your need. Pray for your neighbor's need. Go ahead, brother or sister. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. I just want more of you.
there's power in unity. Amen. Amen. Don't forget our announcements that we had earlier. Most of them are in the bulletin. Some of them, the, the ones that pertaining to June may not be, but don't forget them. Next Sunday night, we'll be having a short meeting. Uh, some things we want to share with you, but keep that in mind. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we hope to see you then, and we just hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week this week. Sister Melissa, would you pray and dismiss this service?